Hey, what's up guys? Professor Tom, hope you love this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, enjoy. Right, so inside control, I've often got an underhook cross face, okay, like this. So, this is the underhook, this is the cross face, gi or no gi, all right. So, from this position, think about what's holding him down. I've got my body weight and I've got my hands. But if I start trying to do something, so let's have a look at the choke we're going to do tonight called the spinning choke if you're in a gi. My left thumb will be behind the nape of his neck, my right hand slides across and gets what a baseball grip. This is also called a baseball choke for this reason. So it's like I'm grabbing a samurai sword, golf club, baseball grip. Don't obviously do it like this. If you do play golf, don't do that. Just hold like this, okay? And so we're gonna start, we gotta get our hands into here. And from here, we'll finish the choke and I'll show you how. However, I can't just go from here and expect that I can take my weight off him and, oh, that's not gonna work, right? Because I took my hands away and the weight away. So I'm gonna need at least one of those things to hold this bugger down while I get my hands in position. So what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna start from your underhook side control and this left hand retracts and gets the thumb in behind the neck, okay? So you got your thumb in behind the neck and I put my fist on the mat. So that keeps him nice into position and it keeps that forearm next to his face, okay? So I've got the thumb on the mat and see how my forearm is still here? So if he tries to hip escape away, his head is being encumbered by my forearm. All right, so thumb in, fist on the ground. I now put my elbow on his hip and I slide up to a knee on belly. So now I can use my right hand, but I've still got my weight through him. And now I get my four fingers in. From this position here, I've got my baseball grip. So we can go for our baseball choke or what we call the spinning choke. The key of doing this choke is to bring my right elbow to my left elbow. It's this weird motion. It just feels weird, okay? So I bring my right elbow to my left elbow, and then where my right toes are, my head goes. Okay? From this position, I'm gonna tripod start, and I pull my wrist towards my belly button. I take my hands out and get up. Don't push up with that X on his neck to get back up into position. Because you choke the guy, he's tapping him, and you're like, let me just put all my weight through your neck now, okay? So, start off in side control, underhook cross face. Get the thumb in the collar, fist on the mat, hop up to knee on belly. That holds the guy enough for me to get those four fingers in. Don't pull this, then it's hard to get the hand in. Punch it, grab, and then elbow to elbow. Where my right toes are, my head goes but I need to run my feet across. So the rule when you want to control someone from side control, gi or no gi, is we need to always keep our body over. So I can't just rotate like this. Right, this won't work because my spine isn't covering him, okay? When we're on top, we want to make sure our spines cross there. So if we look from the roof of the next ray, my spine would be crossing his spine. So I need to run my feet around to about the two o'clock position to put my head in this sort of eight o'clock position. All right, so it starts like this and it ends up as a cross choke and we row to get the finish. But make sure the bones, so this styloid head of your radius bone and the styloid head of your ulnar bone are in the sides of the neck right there, okay? So one more time, side control, thumb in, free grip. Jump up to knee ride, second grip in. Elbows closed, run, head down, and choke. Take your hands out and push yourself up, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna choke the guy out. But look where you're touching the mat. So if my head goes to the mat like here, I look there, okay? And that's what's gonna give you that strong neck. If you want to make this a little bit easier on your neck, if you just jump down again. I can put it so my head is there, but my shoulder is on his body. So you imagine if I had the choke in, I can go here, so a lot of the weight isn't on my head. So if I don't have a strong neck, I can do it so I can put my shoulder on his abdomen and then my head doesn't bear as much weight. 
you can put the head on the belly. That is the traditional way of doing it. Okay, so you imagine I've got my grips in here. I can run to the front and put my head on the belly. Well, I personally don't like this because when you choke people, they freak out. And one of the thing, things people do when they freak out as humans is they like buck their hips and they like buck into your neck. I, I just don't think it's conducive to neck health, right? So I don't do that. I either put my head on the ground or my shoulder on their hip and my head just on the ground, okay? The reason we have to put something down here by the hip, guys, is because if we do not, he can unwind it. See, the choke isn't affected here. It's when I run and now my hands turn into a cross. But if he runs his feet around, look, he undoes it. So I've got to make sure he doesn't undo it and then potentially get the armbar counter. Okay? So this is just something to bear in mind. Alright? So this is our spinning choke. We're going to do part two of this next, which is to do it from underneath. Okay? And do it from the guard and trick them into passing and we'll choke them out from underneath. But first we need to do it from the top. So start in side control, thumb in the collar, jump up to knee right, four fingers in the collar, touch your elbows, spin and row. It's a fantastic choke because you set up a cross choke in disguise. This seems friendly, but it's not. An advanced variation for the color belts or four stripe white belts and above is the first hand is easy to get, you see. The thumb in the collar is easy to get. This is the hand that he's like, no you don't. Because everyone knows one hand in the collar is kind of safe. The second hand means trouble, right? So what we want to do is be always to try to get those hands in the collar and elbows together, okay? However, from this position, just so you're aware, if my hands are in the collar and he's blocking me, okay, especially if you're a colored belt, you can practice sitting them up and changing your grips and taking them back. I do that combination a lot. Another potential combination you can add if you're a more advanced student is you change your thumb in grip to a four finger in grip and you rotate over the guy. So now you've got the tricky grip already and you can get the easy grip second and then we can rotate and finish, okay? So that's a really good setup if you're more advanced. You get the hard grip first and you flop over to the side, get the easy grip and then rotate back for the finish, okay? So I'll show the Nogi students in the corner the Nogi attack next, okay? But let's do the spinning chair first. Part one, let's go! This is going to be the same thing but done from underneath, okay? I'll borrow Shane again. Alright, so guys, same choke. This time, it's just going to be like a downward uh, samurai sword strike or like a baseball swing. So you can think of this as part two of the baseball choke series. So, we're going to start in a guard. You can start in closed guard, open guard. I just generally start kind of like butterfly guard like this. If you ever go to cross choke someone like this, if he or she is a trained opponent, they're going to be like, no way, no you don't, we know this is bad. They recognize the threat. Just like from the top, parallel grips don't trigger that same threat response. So what I can do is like this, I can get these grips in like this. Just like I'm grabbing, right, a samurai sword or a baseball to smash down, I don't know, maybe a letterbox. So I'm trying to think of something in smash down grip. So here. Now what I do is I kick my legs to the side, giving him what appears to be side control. But I turn and I get my elbows together and look at the shape of my hands, guys. They've formed a cross. I run and I get my hands in. So look, this is friendly hands, but as I run and bring my elbows, it forms the cross. So you see how the cross has been formed. And then I row. I like to think of it as hitting downwards like this. Okay? So you think I'm nearing guard, I sit up here. I like to do this when he grabs my legs. So I grab him. He runs, jumps to the side, good for him, and I trap him right here. Like I'm turning and hitting a baseball into the mat. A lot of the time they'll hold onto your hands and they try to stop it and they end up rolling over and then you've got to the top position and now if I like I could spin and do the one we just did. Okay? So 
Uh, Paul here, Blue Belt Paul, is uh, very good at this one. So if you grab his pants, he'll just grab your collar. He doesn't care about the guard pass. Because if you don't grab his pants, he'll grab your collar and kick his legs out there anyway and pull you into side control. And that's how he gets his finish. Okay? So it's all about like this. Alright? So it's... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, this is a very, very effective choke. Understand we are risking. There is a saying in Jiu Jitsu we've all heard. Position before submission. Okay, so I am giving up position. Side control. If it doesn't work, I'll be in trouble here. But I'm telling you, this works so, so, so well. It's the kind of technique where you can accidentally choke people out quite easily. So from this position, sometimes I might bait him. There's 30 seconds left in the round. I get my grips. I'll let him pass and I'll hit my submission. Okay? So there's only 30 seconds left, take a risk. But sometimes he's gonna pass you anyway and your hands can't stop it. You imagine, he's up on his pant like this, he puts two hands on my legs, I'm not gonna be able to stop Shane with my hands. My legs are killed. So when he kills my legs, I'll get the grips. So then when we land here, because we were gonna land here, he ends up getting choked. Okay, so out of interest, although the Nogi guys, this is going to be harder for you to try, but you can do this Nogi. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different grips you can do. You can do it like this and like this, but you can do this same choke Nogi. A friend of mine, this was his favorite attack. So I grip my hands together like this, and now as he passes to the side, my elbows come in and I get the choke. Okay, I can do it with my fingers like this too. So like a monkey grip. So as he goes to pass me, I hold him here and I get the monkey grip and I get the same choke. Okay, experiment with it for the nogi guys and gals. That will be quite a challenge because nothing else is on your side. Body weight and position aren't on your side. So it's going to really require your forearms to come in and choke the neck. Again, you can do it like this or like this. Okay, but hands together and then turning and choking. So as I turn, my forearms are coming together. The gi version looks like this. Hands in, I turn and I choke. Sometimes he'll defend with his hands and he'll roll over like this and you can get to the top. I normally adjust my grip, turn, and then we're doing the same one we did before. Okay, so this is the spinning choke or baseball choke from the bottom. If you're doing the no knee version and you have trouble, you can just practice your guillotine from the bottom. Okay, let's go. Hey guys, hope you love the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget you can check out thegrapplingacademy.com for more courses. Have fun on the mats, happy rolling.